Hi, everyone. Welcome to Be Above Leadership's Coaching 101. Today's session is called Playing on the Skinny Branches. We'll see where this goes. And um, please give us a like and subscribe to our channel if you like our content. We really appreciate it. So hi, Ursula. Hi, Anne. Good to see you. Yeah, it's good skinny to hang friend. out. What a <laughs> kind of a fun, it's a kind of a fun question. So I think let's just go there, which is, um, what do you mean by playing on the skinny branches? Like, what does that mean as a coach, a 20 year coach, you've been doing this? Yeah. And I think uh, I'm glad that you mentioned that I've been doing it for 20 years, because I think like everything else, uh, you know, 20 years ago, and then 15 years ago, and 10 years ago, the scope of the skinny branches uh, and the moving away from the trunk of the tree out into the branches and then getting skinnier over time is really a part of being comfortable with who I am as a coach and knowing the skills and the tools that I have in my backpack um, that I can take some of that off and actually venture out into what's skinnier and surprising okay. novel and, uh, you know, have the clients go like, what was oh. that? So it oh. sounds like, and I really love how you actually kind of gave us that tree, you know, and the, the trunk is like sort of like what you learned in coaching school that we all kind of <laughs> held on to so tightly early yeah. on. So you're, so it's playing on the skinny branches. It's really, you know, another title for this might be breaking the rules. Mm. Like, what, like, so what's a rule that you break that kind of puts you out on the skinnier branches further away from the trunk of the tree? I hope I'm not getting into any kind of trouble with <laughs> you're going to get your PCC any, taken away <laughs> right now. So, uh, well, uh, and again, it's uh, it's very fluid. It also very much depends on the client and uh, how well I know the client and how long we've been in this coaching relationship. But one of the rules I regularly break is I usually don't ask my clients, you know, what do you, where do you want to be at the end of this session, and how do you know you will be there? Because it's my experience that often they have either a very vague idea or no idea at all where they want to be there. There's often more confusion about that. And I think coaching really helps get all that, get that journey clearer. So I very rarely ask that. Uh, it's just what's right here, right now. Yeah. And then it's sort of an unfolding and unpeeling of what's here right, right now. Yeah, I love that. Um... I think I was thinking, for, I was pondering for myself, I don't ask that, I certainly don't ask that all the time. And it's a very, what we know from neuroscience is that would put people, it puts people very much into a narrower part of their brain. It puts people into the left hemisphere when you're like, what is it you want? You're asking them to narrow down, choose one thing. That's not always bad. You know, it's not necessarily just, you know, ran like totally a bad thing, but there are those clients in those times, and probably as you're saying, it's like sometimes more often than not, where it's not useful to narrow them down quite so much right away. It may be useful when we get to, you know, 45 minutes into the session, we've yeah. explored a lot, we've, you know, discovered a lot. And then the question is, all right, now, why does this matter? Where are you going to take it? What are you going to do between now and next time? That's when, you know, you sort of want to get more out of this, you know, broadening state and into a more specific state. I think, is that kind of what you're seeing? Yeah, absolutely. And again, from a neuroscience perspective, I, I really do see that starting a broad, broader, wider, bigger uh, is easy. It's easier to narrow something down. It's much harder to come from a small place and then go bigger. Um, you know, one of my friends said to me, and she was, don't remember where this came from, but she was listening to a famous writer. Oh, it was a writer for the Simpsons. She's listening to a, a podcast about this writer from the Simpsons who says, I just write, I get a whole bunch out there because writing is hard, but editing is easy. And I think there's a corollary to coaching where, yes. you know, sometimes some clients are very clear, good for them. That's totally fine. But sometimes we need to kind of get everything out, look for the patterns, trace where this is related to and all of that. And then we edit. 
Yeah, I love that. I love that visual. I love that metaphor because it's it's really it's really true um, that uh, you know when when there is a lot of things there, it's easier to just expand and look at the color and the shape and then go down to you know what's the detail here. But anyway, skinny bra. Talk about skinny branches. What's that for you? Well, I just want to say one other thing about your skinny branch, because I like your skinny branch too, um, because I love it when I've got a client in particular, I think of who always does this. She comes in and she says, I don't know, I've got three different topics today. I don't really know. You're like, where are we going to go? And, um, and I will not ask her to narrow it all down. I'll ask her to tell me about all of them. Yes. Because I will, pro I will tell you there is always a relationship. There's always like, I don't, I don't think there's going to be time to get through all of the topics and I'll be thinking, well, let's see, maybe not, you know, we can, I'll hear about all of them and you tell me which one's most important. There's always a theme. Yeah, absolutely. I completely agree. And I actually, that is, uh, that, that I find really exciting about, uh, about coaching. Uh, you know, I, I have clients who say, well, you know, I, I know it doesn't matter what I bring. We always find something really. We'll always find about. something. We'll always As we go. I, it doesn't matter what we As talk we go. about. We'll you know, old nugget. I think there's something in this, then I will answer your question. I think there's something in both how you and I view coaching, which is that it's not a transactional space. That we're, we didn't become coaches because we wanted to, you know, help people you know, have a strategic plan to move up the next step of the coach of the of the corporate ladder. That may well happen. It's happened for a lot of my clients. I think both of both you and I see coaching as an opportunity to participate in people's development. Yeah. And really in ideally this idea of their effectiveness and their consciousness. And so all of the, the, those sort of benchmarks along the way are just interesting places, interesting mm -hmm. laboratories to work with them on their development. I think a lot of coaches feel this way. I wouldn't say that we're unique in this, but I think sometimes in the world, the way coaching is seen is the strategic plan. The mat, you know, you're going to help your client move through this strategic plan. And I don't think you and I really have much resonance around that view of coaching. No, no, absolutely. It's the, it's the, it's the inside, the, you know, the inside development. And uh, just as we were talking about skinny branches, this is probably, maybe it's not skinny, maybe a definition of what is a skinny branch <laughs> for all of your listeners is maybe a good place to go. But, uh, you know, it, I'm, I'm just as in this conversation, what I'm realizing is I'm often bringing in the messages from the universe, because I, you know, I don't want to call it Buddha, God, Jesus, you know, for me, it's the bigger picture of spirit. And it, it's so interesting to me that even when we never talk about spirituality, when I say, well, I wonder what the universe is trying to conspire here with you, that that always sort of lights people up in this very um, sort of, yeah, in this delightful, oh, this is a new perspective kind of way. Yeah, I love that too. I would say that's definitely a skinny branch that that I play on, or, you know, maybe we're all out there on the edges of the branches and just hanging out there. So, you know, if you're a skinny branch coach, please put something in the comments and be like, here's my skinny branch. We oh, want to hear that. We'd love to hear that. Um, because I love the, uh, I, I think about so much of who, this is not unique or anything. It's, you know, it's a metaphor many people have used, but I think about how much of who we are is like an iceberg. Mm -hmm. That it's, you know, there's the part that, so there's that whole Johari window thing I remember saw years ago, like what I know that nobody else can see, what other people can see that I can't see, you know, kind of all of this, but there's a whole lot that is under the water that maybe mm -hmm. I can't see it, others can see it, or nobody can see it, it's hidden under there. So I like to think about some of the really nonlinear ways to help Mandy Blake, who's a, a friend of ours, has this great line. Um, she calls it, she, and this is why she says somatic coaching can be so powerful. One reason is it helps to surface the invisibles. Mm -hmm. And I always think about the bringing the iceberg sort of up, you know, so that you can see what's underneath there. Mm -hmm. And so being able to offer my client, I'm very visual. I think very visually, I, I think I've only come to see in the last even few years that the way that I think may not be like how everybody else thinks. <laughs> 
<laughs> because it, I feel like I'm constant, it's like this constant stream of little images <laughs> dropping into my head as yeah. I'm coaching. And um, I will blurt them to my client and I'll, it often will, it'll, it'll be a word or an image. And I will feel like it's just knocking on my head and it's not going to shut up until I say something. And so I will say, and I'm generally, because I do believe in that it is the client's, you know, what's important is what they make out of it. Um, so I'm very respectful in how I offer it. And I'll usually say, you know, just keep getting this word, or I just keep getting this hit, or I just keep seeing like this beaver trying to build a dam, you know, and then the, the question is, you know, does that have any resonance for you? And, you know, do, you, or am I just, you know, off in la la land with the beavers? Um, and I will tell you most of the time it does. And it's not because I don't know, you know, maybe I am psychic, but I think it's just because I, I you are. I, I mean, am. Okay, we'll and, take that. And ever I have had a dilemma, and I've come to you <laughs> like it's like I mean, within five minutes, you have nailed it through some I don't know psychic capability. I don't know. <laughs> I've started saying, and I think this is actually I came. I just this just came up as I was teaching a class, and I'm thinking, you know, maybe you're like me, and you just get all of these images, and they come, and and it feels a little weird to be con, you know, like you know, I'm coaching this person it should be about what they say. Why am I telling them about beavers? I've started um, saying, I have a little hack for that, oh, which good. is say, which is kind of how I explained it here. I am a very visual thinker. It's how I process. Yeah. And so as we're coaching, I'm going to do this now in my design, as yeah. we're coaching, I will get images will come to me sometimes. And do I have permission to share those with you? Because what I find is they're like a doorway into the iceberg. And if they don't resonate, again, I'm not attached. I mean, just there's, who cares? Nope, nothing in the beaver, no problem. We just wasted 15 seconds. It doesn't matter. Well, moving on, right? Yeah. But man, I tell you nine times out of 10, when I do take the courage to share that, it will blow the coaching open to a totally different level. Is that your experience too, oh, Ursula? Yeah, it's it's totally. And, and, and I, you know, I will go so far as to say that uh, you know, and, and this is a style, obviously, you know, there's, you know, this is the good thing about coaching is that each of our energies and styles are very different. And, you know, if you know me at all, I'm sort of a little bit cut through the bullshit, you know, bottom line kind of. Kind of it's kind the of one that. place you have a little bit of that German. <laughs> I have that, yes. I've, I've, I've transformed that into a gift rather than an obstacle. It's quite uh, done quite in a lovely way, but yes. Yeah. But there is this, they, I get these, uh, these hits that are this kind of cut through the bullshit uh, sentence words that I sort of throw in, uh, you know, lovingly, obviously, uh, that that also seems to, I, I sometimes think of this as like a two puzzle pieces trying to lock in, you know, when you're trying to yeah. get that puzzle piece in. And I, I think that is what I'm hearing from you as well. It's you have two pieces. And when you say this, all of a sudden it goes click. Clicks for the, it can click yeah. for the client. It has that, it has that potential. And I will say, honestly, I'm better at it with the clients that I'm more connected to. Mm. You know, the clients where I just, I feel like we are more merged. There's a huge amount of trust. Yes. There's a huge amount of relationship yeah. where th th I, I actually feel like I get more images from them. Mm. So I thought of another place where I, where I break the rules. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, one of the other places I break the rules is I allow, I allow story and I'm not, I don't, um, I definitely know how to kind of take, you know, intervene, take charge, reroute the client if I need to, if the story isn't productive. But I was sharing this with one of my students was getting feedback from her. She was in coaching certification that, you know, she wasn't taking charge. And, um, and I was just sharing with her how I do it. She was getting feedback that I think it was like the coaching topic wasn't clear Oh, and I know what it was. Sorry, I'm, it's all coming back to me. Coaching topic wasn't clear and she needed to get clearer and she was feeling really baffled as to how to do that mm. and take charge, like yeah. take charge and not let the client go into story. And I said, well, I want you to notice that when we coach, 
how quickly, just start sort of think about how quickly do I go in for the topic? And we, you know, sort of thought about, she said, you don't. I said, yeah, I don't. Um, I will get there, but I really like to hear what's going on with the client probably longer than maybe some other coaches, because there's a couple of things happening. One is I feel like I'm, I don't have another word for this, Ursula, maybe you do. I feel like I'm kind of setting the energetic field. Mm -hmm. I'm bringing them into my, what I would call coherent presence. Mm -hmm. And so if it's 10 minutes and they're just telling me about whatever is happening and going on, I'm listening. I'm listening very largely what we might call in some coaching schools, level three, I'm listening to the energy. Mm -hmm. I'm, I, I'm not as cued to, I've got to know what the topic is. I'm going to listen to the energy for the energy. And I'm going to meet it with love. No matter what the client says, they're going to be met with love. And it's like, I'm going to kind of bring them into this place where the topic emerges. And then there are times where I need to go, okay, so here's what I'm hearing. Yeah. Is this where we're going today? Yeah. But I generally take a probably more time than other coaches to just be in the be in the space, bring them into my space, bring them into this feeling where they're loved, accepted, and 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 sometimes that might actually be the majority of what I'm doing in the coaching yeah. is loving them accepting them and helping them find their own coherence yeah no that's beautiful i i love that because i think you and i have discovered uh, through research and reading the healing power of story mm -hmm. that sometimes we need to tell stories often multiple times yeah order for the story to be integrated there's always a different layer and how useful that can be uh, you know, depending on the situation for the client to just tell the story more than once, potentially. Absolutely. And that what I'm doing, I never really totally realized it until I had to explain it to this student who was also, you know, training to be a coach. The client who's trained to be a coach is as the person's telling their story, I'm listening energetically and I'm listening for themes. Yeah. I'm listening for themes. I'm listening for themes that relate to why they came into coaching in the first place. I'm listening to themes that relate to what we talked about last time. I'm listening for themes of who I know they're becoming. And that's maybe what I'm going to be pulling back out to help come to what's the real topic for today. And again, some clients come in with absolutely clear on the topic and we move into coaching and we maybe even use a very you know, crystal clear coaching tool, but there's a real percentage of the time where um, I'm going to give it some space before I dive right into. So this is what we're doing and this is what you want. Well, I think it speaks a little bit to big, big space, narrow space, because stories often are, you know, the bigger, yes, yeah. the bigger picture and the bigger space. I think the challenge with story, and we know this from a neuroscience perspective, is we don't want a client to wire in a mm -hmm. victim story or a negative story or a story that's disempowering. And that, that's what I mean by negative, a disempowering yes. story. We don't want them to keep going back over it in such a way that that becomes stronger. But there's a difference between a client who's sort of exploring, like I'm not even, you know, there's six things going on right now and my struggling with my son and I'm not very happy with what's going on at work. And, you know, and then this thing happened in the parking lot and I'm listening to see, is there a core energy? Is yeah. there a core lesson? Is there a human development lesson that this, that the universe is sort of illuminating right now? And that, and, and it could be that then what I end up hearing is um, that the topic is boundaries. Yeah. Right. Or something yeah. like that. Yeah. And I, I, I think the other thing that is also true, and, and this often happens for me, uh, I'm sometimes not really clear what I want to say, but the longer I talk, the clearer it begins to yeah. shake its shape yeah. in my own brain. And I think that yeah. can also happen. Yeah, know, they hear twice. themselves, Yep. but they don't necessarily just hear themselves if they're in quite the same way. So this is, again, the energetic space. So they can have the same conversation with a friend, 
but they're not being held in a way or reflected mm -hmm. in a way where they actually can start to see, oh, hold on. That sounds like I'm being a big old victim here. Hold <laughs> on a minute, right? They might not get that, but they're going to get that in the reflection and in the presence of the coach. Yes. So I, I have come to the, you know, with all of our work on human development, coaching. I've been a coach for 20 years, Ursula for somewhat longer. We've taught coaching. We do the neuroscience of coaching. We study the brain, the body, every part of the system. I think what the two of us have probably come back to as the most critical factor in coaching is who you are as a coach and how present you are. Yes. Yeah. Your energy field. How will... much do you love, right? Yeah. I'm sorry. I got excited. Yeah, no, I absolutely. How much, you know, how much you can love, include, and bring that energy, that energy field will shape the coaching. Totally. Can you love everything the client brings and, you know, self-manage enough to be really present with anything and then they bring you more and then the more that they bring you and the more that it's met with love, as well as all of our tools and skills and powerful questions and values and all of that. It's not like we None of, you know, it's not like we don't use any of that, but if you can meet it with love, I think tremendous healing happen, can happen in this space. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. The, and the other thing, and then, uh, you know, I know we, we have to sort of complete, the, I think what's connected to that is also trusting. You know, I see this in many of our students, some of our, just like you, my clients that are beginning coaches is there's sometimes this question mark in the back of their heads, you know, will it be okay if, and if I do that, will it be okay? And really this amount of trust in you and the client yes. that, that you love them, you are loved back. They already love you. Otherwise they wouldn't be in this relationship that kind of trust really can be absolutely magical. So this, um, this image just hit me to kind of loop back to your, you know, you're talking about hanging onto the trunk of the tree. And so the thought that just hit me, the image, cause I said, I'm visual, the image that hit me is um, I live in Santa Fe and there's lots of apricot trees here and all the apricots are um, becoming ripe. And so the skinny branches are where the fruit is. So love that. Is that good? I love it. And I love <laughs> it. Out on the skinny branches. So yes, please again like and subscribe and put your own skinny branch down in the down in the comments. We would love to hear more about the places that you love to play as a coach that you find are just full of wonderful fruit. So thanks so much. Thanks. Take care. Goodbye, Bye, everybody. <laughs>